whether we live in a big city or in the country, most Australians depend in some way on the railways. In this land of vast distances, trains carry not only passengers, but mail and parcels. And agricultural products like wool, wheat and livestock. And manufactured goods and raw materials of all kinds. Since Australia's first train of 1854, farmers, graziers and businessmen have found it cheap and convenient to use trains for carrying heavy loads over long distances. Until motor cars and then aeroplanes came into general use less than 50 years ago, trains were also the fastest means of carrying goods and people anywhere. In the early days, as the Australian settlers moved inland, growing wheat, wool and other products, the railways were built to bring them the food and supplies they needed, and to take their farm produce to the city markets and seaports. There is now a network of 26,000 miles of rail lines spread throughout the Australian states enough to travel once round the Earth's equator. But in such a big country as ours, there are still areas where no lines have yet been built. Many men are employed on the railways. There are signal men who look after the signal boxes, making sure the lines are clear before another train comes through. There are gangers who repair rail tracks and make sure they're kept in good condition. And there are yardmen who couple up the carriages. And others who examine the wheels and undercarriages to see that the trains are safe to travel in. There are engine drivers who drive the powerful locomotives. The station master is responsible for all the trains that pass through his station. He controls the men who load the trains and the porters who check the passengers' tickets. Thousands of skilled tradesmen are employed in railway workshops where the trains are kept in good running condition and in factories where the railway carriages and locomotives are built. The diesel engines fitted to the locomotives give them power to haul loads weighing thousands of tons at high speeds. Many types of locomotives, trucks and passenger carriages are built to serve the needs of the railways. No type of country is too difficult for the men who build the railways. Soon a new line will be built through this valley. First, surveyors go out to plan the best route for the new rail tracks. The steel tracks themselves are often joined into long lengths and sent to the construction site on flat top trucks. The long lengths of line give smoother and quieter travel. The tracks are laid on heavy hardwood sleepers and fastened with iron spikes. Heavy blue metal is packed around the rails and sleepers to keep them in position. The stone is dropped and spread along the newly laid line.
Trains can travel over almost any type of country. Bridges are built to carry the tracks over steep gorges and wide rivers. In rugged mountain country, cuttings are made through smaller hills and tunnels are built through steep hills to avoid taking a long route around them. Rail tracks carry the trains through the jungle and tropical fruit country, over the golden wheat lands of Western Australia, through coastal farmlands, and across the great flat stretches of the Nullarbor Plain. As the trains race across country, the passengers relax in comfort. Modern trains are fitted with sleepers and with dining cars. They are air conditioned so that the passengers may travel in comfort under all weather conditions. Just as important as passenger trains are the work trains that carry great loads of produce, raw materials and manufactured goods from one end of the country to the other. Whatever the load may be, the railways have the equipment and the rolling stock to carry it. The goods trains are assembled in marshalling yards by a system known as shunting. The shunters arrange the loaded trucks in the right order on the trains so that they can be uncoupled at their destinations as the trains travel from town to town. Each truck carries a label showing its starting point and its destination. A shunter releases the brakes, allowing the truck to move slowly downhill to the next man, who switches the points so that the truck goes onto the right line. Railway lines in most countries are a standard gauge, or width, of four feet eight and a half inches. But in Australia, many of the states have different gauges. Now, a standard gauge line is being built connecting all the mainland capitals. This will permit freight to be carried from one end of the continent to the other, without unloading and reloading. Already a standard gauge line runs from Brisbane to Melbourne. Although mixed loads are common, there are many trains with trucks designed to carry one class of goods only. From far inland, sheep or cattle are loaded onto stock trains, which carry them up to 1,000 miles to market. In Queensland, special trains carry sugar from the sugar mills to the seaports. In the Derwent Valley in Tasmania, the logging special takes great loads of eucalyptus logs to the paper mills at Boya. Coal is the most important single item of freight on the railway. At Lee Creek in South Australia, coal from the open-cut mine is taken to power stations. The five and a half thousand tonne train is the heaviest in Australia. From the big open-cut mines at Yalorn and Morwell in Victoria, coal trains carry millions of tonnes of brown coal and briquettes each year, providing fuel, gas and power for homes and industry. The railways have many special services. Between Port Augusta and Kalgoorlie, there is a partnership between road and rail transport, known as the Pickaback Rail Service. Road trucks are driven onto the railway trucks and carried 1,100 miles across the Nullarbor Plain. The drivers are able to sleep during the trip, saving themselves and their engines a long, hard drive across the Nullarbor. The Nullarbor Plain has another famous train, known as the Tea and Sugar. 
It carries bread, meat and groceries on a weekly run across the flat plains. The tea and sugar train is village store, bank and pay office for the railway workers and their families who live in settlements along the rail track and who work to keep lines in good repair. It is a special train service for the people who live in this lonely stretch of country. In the western district of New South Wales, a special health clinic train makes regular visits to isolated towns. The clinic sister lives on board the train and conducts a baby health centre for the mothers. At one time, all locomotives were powered by steam. The steam, which is made in the engine boiler, turns the driving wheels. Although the steam locomotive is being replaced by diesel locomotives and electric trains, it still finds regular work in many places. In Port Piri in South Australia, a steam locomotive is used to shunt the freight between the goods yard and the steelworks. Some express trains are still drawn by steam locomotives. But the diesel locomotive is gradually taking over for both passenger and freight services because it is fast and strong and economical to run and maintain. For lighter loads, there are diesel rail cars, a passenger car with its own diesel engine. It provides fast travel between towns where there are not many passengers to be carried. In some states, diesels are used on suburban passenger services, like this one in South Australia, known as the Red Hen. In Melbourne and in Sydney, electric trains carry suburban passengers. Sydney has the only underground rail service in Australia. In peak hours, the train runs every two minutes along the four-mile loop that links the inner city station. In New South Wales and Victoria, electric trains travel 90 miles out from Sydney and Melbourne. One of these is an express train serving the Blue Mountains area, some 60 miles west of Sydney. Australia's railways are developing, keeping pace with the growth of our population and the expansion of our towns, cities and industries. No matter where we live, most of us depend in some way on the railways, which carry passengers, mail and parcels, and the products of our farms and factories throughout Australia.